What's up everybody, it's me, Hassan. Uh, today, we're gonna check out some modern vets and see which one fits your budget best. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys the C5 Z06, which is honestly one of the greatest cars because of the price point and how much fun they are to drive. The C5 Z06 came out in 2001. It's really just, it's made its mark in the Corvette world. A lot of cool features about this one particularly we'll go over soon. And of course we have the culture favorite, which is the C6. This one is uh, my personal ZR1, one of the absolute most fun cars to drive. Also for the money, you just can't beat the C6. And this one is more of a modern uh, C7. Still, I feel like this car has not aged. It is. It has not been outdated by its successor, which is a C8, but it is just still up to today's par in the car world. Last but not least, we have the C8, one of the, obviously, the supercar of the Corvette, the most exotic looking. Sorry if I said supercar and that pisses you off, but hey, on paper, it is one. I'm sorry to tell you that. Wait, no, wait, no, you're not, we're not recording this. This is, uh, this is not, I guess technically it is a Corvette. So we'll talk about this one a little bit, but we won't compare it to a Corvette because it's the bastard of the Corvette. We'll call it Corvette Snow. So let's start with the C5. The C5 was originally introduced in 1997. It was a totally new platform compared to the C4. They call it the Y-Body. The C5 also introduced one of the greatest engines known to mankind, the LS1. They really tried to do something different after the C4 and getting heat from all the Japanese car manufacturers with the Toyota Supra, the RX-7, the Skyline, and those cars being so ahead of its time, the C5 really needed to step it up to be competitive. They offered a few different variants of the C5. You could get it in a Targa coupe, you could get it in a convertible, you could get it in a fixed roof coupe, which was uh, just like this one, only available for two years, and that eventually became the Z06, which is still up to today's standard, 400 horsepower, about 400 torque, and they just did a great job with the C5 Z06. A lot of good things about the C5. Uh, it has a lot of space. You could really do a cross-country trip in it, and I've done that twice. It's really just, it's it's got space, it's got a good sound system, it's a Bose, it's a six speaker, but you know, it's plenty for a long drive. They have a lot of, God damn it, a bug just flew in my ear. <laughs> so they are cheap and they're easy to fix. You could get a C5 Z06 for about 25 grand, depending on the year. In 2001, they had 385 horsepower and 2002 to 04, they got a bump in power. One of the best things about the C5 is having the whole trunk area behind your back and you can grab anything you want with which makes it good for road trips in case you forget your charger in your backpack and you need to grab it you could just grab it straight out of the trunk uh, one of my favorite things about the c5 is definitely this which we lost in the c5 and it's these pop-up headlights this was one of the last cars with pop-up headlights and that is just it's so cool you, yeah, who doesn't love pop-up headlights the c5 z06 uh, a cool feature about them the wheels were actually made by a company in Italy, and I still think these wheels are one of the best stock wheels. Uh, you don't see deep dish wheels anymore, and it's just so cool that this car got that. So driving the C5 Z06, you would think it's got creaks and rattles, but you know, it really doesn't. But really, it's a, it's a very solid built car. Um, you know, with these cargo dividers in the back, uh, it definitely helps with a little bit of sound deadening from the tire noise, but other than that, it's just a great car. The seats aren't the most um, supportive, but you know, you do wiggle around a little bit in them, but they are really comfortable. There's really not much lumbar support or anything, but in a long drive, you really really gets the job done. Back numbers here, we're in third gear. We'll do a little bit of a pull. So zero to 60 on these cars uh, with the 405 horsepower engine. It was about 3.9 seconds, and that was really good for its time. I mean, still today, there's not a lot of cars besides the really electric and fast stuff. There's not really a lot of cars out there with 0 to 60s under 4 seconds, and you're starting
starting to see it more now with today's technology, but really off the line, this car is a blast to drive. So now before we jump into the C6, I want to talk about the forgotten C6, the Corvette Snow, as I mentioned earlier. This is a Cadillac XLRV. They only made these for a couple years. It was really the GT version. Cadillac wanted to take the Corvette and make it more luxurious. And I think they did a great job. This car has aged like fine wine. I think today it still looks really good. And surprisingly, I've driven this car for a couple thousand miles and I got attention everywhere I went. I don't know if it's just the nostalgia from the car being a Cadillac. I'm not sure what it is. The XLR came out originally in 04. This one is an XLRV so it was supercharged. The XLRV came out in 06. So the XLR came out originally in 04. It was after the C5 and actually the C6 was co-developed with the XLR. Now they wanted something different. They made it a hardtop convertible to compete with the Mercedes SL which was just blowing up on the market. They wanted to do something of their own. The XLR came out in 2004 which was right before the C6. I've seen these 4.4 supercharged go up to 300,000 miles without issue. Now, the long-awaited, the C6. This is my personal ZR1. It's the only C6. I mean, we have a couple other ZR1s, but I want to talk about mine. This one is about 860 horsepower to the tire. It is super fast, and it is a great example of why C6s are so good. On a 20-inch wheel and tire with R888s, it really puts the power down. I think this is one of the most beloved C6s because of how fast they are, how light they are. You know, for being 3,300 pounds, and 860 to the wheel that is like you know supercar killer territory the LS3 is one of the most legendary motors in my opinion they used it in a lot of different applications just because of how good and reliable it was not to mention it was cheap to make C6 has got a little bit of an updated interior let's start with the C6 base you know for 25 grand you can get a really clean one they have a lot of room just like the c5 they're target tops you can get them in a four-speed auto or a manual transmission it still has a target top which you don't get in the z06 and the zr1 <laughs> getting into the C7. I feel like the C7 was the first time GM really tried to get away from the older crowd and making their car more geared towards younger people. The C7 came in a couple different variants. You could get the C7 base model with the Z51 package. You could get the C7 Grand Sport. They obviously had a C7 Z06 and for one year only as a send-off to the front engine Corvette they made a C7 ZR1. Now we don't have a C7 base model here uh, however we did have this Grand Sport Sport, beautiful white over red. The Grand Sport came with about 460 horsepower. In my opinion, I think the C7 Grand Sport is the most track capable out of the three. I think the other ones are kind of dangerously fast and the C7 is just very well balanced. With the horsepower, with the torque, with the interior of these cars, they really stepped it up. You could get the C7 Grand Sport with the Z07 package, which gave it stiffer suspension more aerodynamics and carbon ceramic brakes which was an awesome touch to the car. With that being said, let's talk about the Z06. It actually killed the prices of the C6 ZR1s because it had a little bit more horsepower, it had a way better interior, and it, at the time it had more sex appeal. And I think the biggest thing really that I liked about this was why I picked the C7 Z06 over a C6 ZR1 to be my first Corvette was because it had a target top, it had heated and cooled 
seats. They had a 10 speaker Bose system. They did a really good job on this car and it really felt like a European car compared to the C6's old American styling. The C7 Z06 had 650 horsepower, 650 torque. They were really fast out of the box. They came with a 1.7 liter supercharger which gave you all of the torque at about 1800 RPMs which is nuts. These cars are awesome. They have a lot of aftermarket support, tons of carbon fiber from the factory. I feel like you definitely need to do a set of wheels just to make them stand apart. Other than that, awesome car. Last and definitely not least, we have a C7 ZR1. This is my personal car. I've owned this car for almost three years now and this is the one car that I think I'm gonna keep for the rest of my life. This one is a seven speed manual. I think it's the most perfect Corvette from the factory. I don't wanna tune it, I don't wanna do anything. The only thing I changed was the wheels and the exhaust. That's just cause that's who I am. Um, I added a couple little more carbon fiber goodies, but that's really it. And that was just to spruce it up a little bit more. I really think it's one of the best Corvettes made and that's why the prices are what they are. base came out in 2014 I remember a lot of people hated the way it looked oh no more round tail lights the backs ugly this that no one was happy with the way it was I I liked it I liked it I saw it and I was just like I think it's a good-looking car and it's a step forward a lot of younger people also saw that and you know the sales numbers spoke for themselves C7 when it came out, it came out with a six-speed automatic, which later got switched to an eight-speed, and the eight-speed, awesome transmission for certain things. Best is my personal favorite, the seven-speed manual. These cars came with automatic rev match, which is pretty cool. I know it's a cheat code, but it's awesome to drive. It's probably one of the most fun manual transmissions to have out there. The C7Z06, probably the performance bargain. You can get those um, average about $70,000 $70, depending on year and what spec you get. And the C7 is just awesome. C7Z06 is just awesome. 650 horsepower, 650 torque with bolt-ons, cam, and all the fun stuff. You can make like 800 wheel. And that car is just it outperforms a lot of cars for the money. Now we're down to our last one, the C8. Now the C8 came out and it kind of set a new benchmark in the world. When the base model came out, it started at $59,000, did zero to 60 in under three seconds, was a mid-engine car with the look of a supercar. Now it wasn't a supercar, Corvettes won't be supercars, we get it, but it definitely had this exotic-like presence that you really couldn't get for under a hundred grand unless you bought something old and just, it wasn't the same. You get a lot of nice creature comfort with this heated and cooled seats on both sides memory seats which were in the c5 too bose system with 14 speakers and it's like a world-class speaker system wireless carplay which came out in 2021 you had a lot of stuff that you didn't see in corvettes backup camera with front cameras with a rear view camera which is just awesome to have the downsides to having the base car is really the zero to 60 is awesome but it kind of gets boring after 60 miles an hour and I kind of blame the gearing on that. They definitely wanted that zero to 60 mark and they got it, but everything after, it's a little bit of a slouch, but HP tuners just unlocked the computers on these. So there's finally some aftermarket support on making the base model faster. The Z06 uh, is an American Ferrari. That flat plane crank is just gnarly. It sounds exotic, it looks exotic, and once again, I ordered this spec because I wanted it to be an exotic looking car. Uh, DCT, flat plane crank, um, it really is an awesome car for the money and you can't beat it. The only flaw this car has, it is absolutely terrible on gas. I think it's one of the worst 
fuel economy Corvettes I own and I blame that partially because I want to be in that high RPM range with this car all the time. All right, now we're in the C8 and obviously you can tell right away that there's an engine behind me instead of a hatchback. C8 came out in uh, 2020. It was the first mid-engine Corvette to be made. Uh, they did not offer a manual transmission anymore. They came with the Tremec dual-clutch transmission, which honestly, it's pretty phenomenal. You can just hear how fast it shifts. So far, the C8 is available in a base model, which is still a 6.2 liter. The C8 base is offered in two trim levels so far. We have the base, which you could get a Z51 package, is about 495 horsepower, or the Z06, which is 670 horsepower. It's the highest horsepower naturally aspirated V8 on the market or in existence. 670 horsepower from a 5.5 liter dual overhead cam V8 revs up to 8200 RPMs. It's just... It's so much fun. As you can tell, I just took off from the line. The mid-range torque is just awesome on this car. You could use this whole power band. This car will get you in trouble though. I... <laughs> I can tell from experience. Compared to the C6 and C7 ZR1, just because of the torque output and where the power band is, it actually, it's a lot of fun. I always told myself I wanted my first supercar. I wanted something that was DCT. I wanted something that was mid-engine. And I'm so happy Corvette made that. This car has an exhaust system on it, which didn't really make it much louder, but it definitely changed the pitch of the car. I did some wheels on it, lowered it a little bit. Speaking of lowered, that's another cool thing. This car is the first Corvette to have front lift, and it will uh, remember where to lift your car automatically. It's pretty awesome. The base car, you could get them uh, around 90,000 as the average. Uh, a lot of a lot of features. The sound system in this car is amazing. It's all digital inside. It's got a digital mirror. You could get this in a hardtop convertible, which is the first time the Corvette has had a hardtop convertible, minus the XLR you guys saw. And it's just, it's full of tech. There's a ton of carbon fiber. Like, GM really made an enthusiast car when they made the Z06, and I respect the hell out of that. Not a lot of car companies, aka Mercedes, they, they're they not really listening to the uh, enthusiasts and what they want. The purists don't think this is the best Corvette because it doesn't have the sound of a Corvette, but who cares? They finally did something for us, and they made a car that we could love and enjoy. This car is phenomenal. I've put about close to 3,000 miles on it and I actually just sold it which is crazy so that's why this formatting is a little bit different compared to the other I had to record this part myself but great cars C8 Z06's uh, range anywhere from 160 to 200 it's a lot of car for the money base MSRP is 106 and I mean can you beat that for $106,000 yeah you won't get this crazy carbon interior or the sound system but you get this engine for $106,000 you get this sound for $106,000 you get this performance for $106,000 that's unbeatable so once again GM did an awesome job going back to naturally aspirated on the Z06 and they really outdid themselves. So once again guys, there really is no Corvette that's better than the other in my opinion. It depends on your budget and what you want to do with the car. One can be cheaper to fix, one can be more expensive to fix, one will look cheaper when you pull up somewhere, one will look like a high-end supercar. So it really depends on what your build is, what you want to do with the car, and how you want to drive it. Hey guys, if you liked today's video, please hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see. Plan on doing a lot more car reviews like this one. Thanks again for watching, guys.